A recent survey by international payment specialist Airwallex has revealed that 77% of small and medium-sized UK businesses plan to expand their international presence in 2022. If this is you, or you already have customers or suppliers abroad, having a business account that can handle multiple currencies seems like a no-brainer. But with loads of new tech and banking providers out there, picking the right account can be tricky. To get the ball rolling, here are four tips to help you compare accounts. And when you're ready to go, at the end of this video, I've also included a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up your brand new business account. If you have customers overseas who want to pay for goods or services in their own currency, or you need to pay suppliers that are based abroad, you'll likely face a conversion fee for receiving a payment into or making a payment from your sterling account. So you could typically end up paying a £2 to £15 flat fee and a 2 to 3% conversion fee to receive a payment from a US customer in dollars and then face a separate fee to pay a US supplier in dollars, effectively a double conversion hit. But if you have a multi-currency business account, which enabled you to make and receive payments in dollars as well as sterling and additional currencies, you could avoid these fees altogether. The business account sector has boomed in recent years, so you'll have loads of accounts to compare, including a bunch of digital-only providers that tend to have more sophisticated digital banking features and accounting tools. Bear in mind, if your account provider is not a fully licensed bank, as is the case with some digital challengers, your funds up to £85,000 won't be protected by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. However, all providers that offer business accounts in the UK have to be licensed by the Financial Conduct Authority as an electronic money or e-money institution. Just make sure the account you select can actually hold the currencies you want to trade in. It's also worth checking where your provider's local currency accounts are domiciled. For example, if your UK-based multi-currency account can hold US dollars, but it doesn't come with separate US account details, you could still incur international transaction fees for dollar payments. For many of us, our personal bank accounts simply tick away in the background without incurring any fees. The same does not always apply for business banking, where you could get hit with monthly account fees, transaction fees, or fees for using your card abroad. When comparing the right business account for you, it's a really good idea to get a clear picture of what the fees could be for your business before deciding on one account over the other. To save you rummaging through the small print, we've dug out many of the fees and features for different business accounts in a handy comparison table, which you can access by clicking this link up here at the end of the video. Business account features will vary between different providers, so it's a good idea to think in advance what features your business needs, like advanced accounting tools, the ability to hold balances in multiple currencies, or physical or virtual cards for your employees to use. Having multiple cards for your employees can be a great way to manage cash flow and keep track of your expenses. Plus, if those cards have low overseas spending fees or the account they're linked to lets you pay in the currency of the country you're in to avoid conversion fees, then that's an added bonus. Be sure to check in advance for any fees that come with your employee cards before you go handing them out. Some account providers will charge per active card, while some may charge for each card you request, whether it's then used or not. Different business account providers will set different limits on how much you can withdraw or spend on your debit card each day. There might also be a limit on how many transactions or transfers you can make each month before a fee kicks in. So make sure any account limits are in line with how you'll use the account, whether you're a big spender or slightly stricter with those purse strings. If you've given your employees cards linked to the business account, as the main account holder, you'll also be able to set limits on individual cards and track employee expenses and spending in real time. Now I'm going to run through how to set up your new business account using Airwallex as an example. But before we get stuck in, here is a list of documents and information that you will need to hand when opening an account. Now, this list might look slightly different for different providers, depending on their specific eligibility criteria. So, here's how to sign up with Airwallex. 
Step one, create an account. Step two, confirm your email address by clicking the big purple confirm your email address button in the relevant email. Step three is to add your basic business information, including business structure, company number, and the industry you work in. Step four requires you to upload your business and personal identification documents, like your certificate of incorporation and a passport photo or driver's license for any directors, etc. For step five, you need to add some basic details about how your business plans to use Airwallex. The final step is to review all of your information and make sure it's correct before hitting submit. For more information and to start comparing business accounts, visit finder.com by clicking this link up here. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe and hit that bell button to be the first to know when a new video drops. Thanks for watching.